I'm going to show you how to make a route ticket on the mobile device side that includes your line items for charges. Maybe you have chemicals you charge for or other products, um, along with the group fields that we use for reporting purposes. So the first thing you need to do here is make sure your route schedule is correct. Once it's correct here on the uh, desktop side, we're going to click Sync Mobile Devices. And you're just going to do a sync of routes. You want to make sure that the techs have the newest route schedule up in front of them. Once you select routes, hit the sync button. This will sync this to the mobile device side. Once that's done syncing, what you're going to do is have your techs log in with their username and password. And when they first sign in, they're met with today's stops. On this screen here, it's going to show you any tasks or any route stops that you have for today. Um, I have four routes for today, but we can also access them by going to route and then schedule. If I had more stops, I'd be able to select per date and figure out what I need, but I only have stops on 328 currently set. Next, we want to go ahead and start a route ticket. So as a technician, we're going to click on actions and go to stop details. These other three options, in route, on site, and complete, are all GPS check-ins. You simply click it to do a GPS location on a map. A lot of customers do not use this, but we do have some that do, because you will get a GPS location when you're completing a route ticket regardless. So if we don't need these extra check-in options, we can just click on stop details. And this brings us to the customer profile that we're about to do our work for. I'm going to the Brazil food market here. It gives me a little bit of extra information that I may or may not need. But to create my route ticket, I just go ahead and click Create Ticket. And in here, you'll notice again, we have the customer name, the route technician, the stop number, and the date. The first thing your techs are going to do when they get on site is click Arrival Time. I am not sharing my geolocation. However, you want your text to always hit Allow. The system will log their GPS location, which you can use later for reporting purposes. Now, you'll notice that I had to click a button here in order to get a time to kick in. We could click in here and just start typing in times, but our system will not save that time. You must click the button. This is what keeps everybody honest. This is how we know people are truly on site when they say they're on site. After they've checked in, if there's anything extra that they've noticed throughout their work, they could put it in here. Let's say that uh, they're doing a, a pool. Let's say we're working on a pool and uh, one of the pumps is going bad. We can put that note in here. And once we're done, maybe we need to create a task to send a tech on site. Period. So once we've got this here, and we've got the note that we want, the next thing is we need to save that note. They have to hit save here in the upper right. They will get a request to complete the ticket, but we're not done. So just go ahead and hit no, we're not done. We do not want to complete this ticket. This will save that note in stone. The next thing we have is our three group fields that are used for reporting purposes only. Now these are super helpful. Let's say you are a pool company or another company that needs to track chemical settings or things that you've used every time you're on site. The first thing you have here is you can put in whatever numbers you need. You can answer any of these questions. But what's really cool is that we have this little history. And if we click it, it's going to show us up to the last four times that we've been on location and what we've used for actual um, data. So maybe you're trying to figure out why a pool just won't become clear and you've added a lot of chemicals. You can actually see the history of what you've added while on location the last four times. Currently, I've only done two stops for this customer, so you're only seeing two. So what you want to do is go through and fill out these groups for your reporting, which works later purely for reporting purposes. Our charges are in the line items area. But we do have a large amount of groups here. We also have checkoffs. Maybe we want to check off a few things that we did while we were on site. The next step here in any ticket and to make it easy to navigate the app, you can just click where it has a plus or minus sign, and that will compact or expand these columns. But the next step here is your techs need to add the line items. 
Now, had you put in the work to create the customer-specific pricing as shown in the previous videos, this is where it pays off. Instead of your text having to click Add Items, finding each item one by one and adding it, which is truly a pain, instead, and you'll notice that the item I just added now shows up, instead they can use a button called Load Pricing. So if you created customer-specific pricing in the desktop, for your technicians, all you have to do is hit load pricing. And you're going to notice that it has loaded all the items that I had in my pricing. I had items one through four, but I also added item one just a moment ago. So we've got two instances of item one. So we're going to want to get rid of those, or at least one of those. What your techs can do is they can click on any of these items, and they get more options. In here, I have the ability to remove one. This is an extra item. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Now I'm down to just the four that I had in my customer-specific pricing. From here, your technician can now pick and choose. He can add the things that he's using while on site. So let's say I went to item one here, and, and I am uh, going to use a quantity of two. I can just type it in right here or use the slider. Um, very hard to use the slider on a mobile device. I highly recommend just typing it in. You can also adjust other things, such as the rate and uh, whether it's taxable or not. But honestly, this taxable should never be flipped in the field. I don't even know why we really offer this option because this should be set on the QuickBooks side. If an item's to be taxable, it should be set in the QuickBooks side and it should be pushed through the system. So I would not recommend your technicians ever use this. Once we've added what we need, we can click Update. And you'll notice that it now displays a quantity of two, and I charge a dollar for my rate, so we have a total of $2. And maybe we need item three. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in a quantity of one for item three, and then hit update. So once we're done adding all of our charges, we just need to finish up this ticket. If your techs want to add any images, they can go ahead and click Add Pictures. Now, on their mobile device, it's much different than the desktop. When they hit Choose File, they have the option to take a picture right then or to add a pre-existing image. I'm adding an image that I've already taken because I'm working off of a machine. If I was on the mobile device, though, I could take a picture right then and there. And once you're done, you hit the Save button right here. You must hit Save to continue. If we expand images again, you'll notice that we do have a picture saved. The last step here is the footer. So what your techs are going to do is they're going to check out because they're departing. Click that button, say yes to share your location if it asks you. We have a time. Now we can go back to the footer and we can complete this ticket. There are two ways to complete this ticket. We can either mark it as complete by just sliding the slider, or we can sign it. We click sign. We can actually use our finger on the device to just kind of squiggle around. Put in the name of the customer who's signing it and hit submit. Then going to ask if you want to complete the ticket. Click OK. This route ticket is complete. We go to the footer. We'll notice that it's now marked as complete. And your technicians have two options. They can click email and email this from their local device. And it will send a copy right to the customer. It will pull the customer's location. I mean, it will pull the customer's email address. The other thing they can do if they really want to just see what they've done is hit print. And this is what will display. If you email to a customer, they have a link they click, and this is what the customer sees. It's a receipt, for lack of a better word. I'm missing an image here because I removed my logo earlier. But if you have a logo for your company, give it to us, and it will display along the top here. If we scroll down, we'll notice the group fields, the items that we've added for charges. We have also see the images and the checked off things that we did. So this route ticket's complete. Next, we need to sync this back into the desktop. To do that, we select Route Tickets. First of all, if the screen is not open, click on Sync Mobile Devices. Select Route Tickets from the top dropdown, and then Sync. Yes, we do want to sync. You'll notice a couple things. The bottom right, we see a Run Query, and it'll fill up slowly with a green status bar. The other thing, too, if you see not responding along the top of the software, it doesn't mean it's not working. It's just working really hard, and it is still performing its work behind the scenes. You must allow the software to sit. Do not ever force close the software. If it has a problem, it will tell you. Even if the screen goes completely white, which I have seen in the past, 
it will eventually display the screen again and it will tell you when it's done. So you just let the software run, it's doing its job, even if it says not responding. If it has an error, it'll give you an error. At that time, if you do run into an error, click chat now, jump into the tech support forum, and they'll get connected and fix it for you. If you get complete, that's perfect, that's exactly what we want. We're gonna click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and close the syncing area. And now if we go to route info, route ticket list, we're gonna see the ticket that I just performed right here. We're gonna notice that I have a note here that says pump is going bad, please fix. That's an indication that we need to send a task out. Right here I've said please create a task. From this list, we can go ahead and click create task. It'll ask if you'd like to, you say yes. It'll tell you it's successfully created. And now we have a task with all of the information that we needed from that ticket. All we have to do is give it the date that we want to work that task and assign it to somebody, and we're done. We click close, the task is now on the task list, waiting for work to be performed at a later date. Now there's one other thing I want to show you. We have these complete route tickets. If we go into the ticket by double clicking the number that was listed in blue, it'll bring us in, we can see all the readings, we can see the line items and the charges. So this is one area where you can review your route tickets. The next thing you can do if you go to route info, tickets pending the post. This is where our route tickets sit when they're waiting to go to QuickBooks, which we will show you in a later video how to post the dispatch to QuickBooks. You'll notice that you're gonna see a lot of the same things, but what this is is each line represents one line item. So there's the customer and then the item. These are the four items that we did on today's ticket. It will tell you the quantity along with the charges, so you know what's waiting to go to QuickBooks. Now we do have the ability to remove zero dollar totals. So the items you don't charge for won't show up on QuickBooks if you don't want them to on those invoices. At this time, that's how you work a route ticket and this is where they stage. The next video will show you how to batch push these into QuickBooks.